What you guys got another video today we're taking a look at 10 things or 10 settings every user should do right now on their computer this is a common thing that i see a lot of people not doing and they should be following this because it's important and uh, we're going to go through them in this video the first thing i think is very important is if you're not using a microsoft account then you should change it to a local account there's probably people that have installed windows and not realized that you can go back to a local account once you've been forced to sign into a Microsoft account. The best thing to do really is not to sign into a Microsoft account at the very beginning. But if you have and you want to go back to a local account, this is how you do it. Go into accounts, inside settings, and then go your info. Inside here, you'll see Microsoft account. It says sign in with a local account instead. It's right here. Click on this and you'll see, are you sure you want to switch to a local account? Windows works better when you're signed into a Microsoft account. Of course, they're going to say that, but basically you want to switch to a local account. That way, Microsoft are not harvesting as much data from you when you are in a local account. Once you get to this, click on next and you'll see either your password or PIN. I'm going to use the PIN method, so I'm going to put my PIN in. And now you get the chance to change your username. If it's something you don't like, you can change it right here, right now. So I'm going to put Brightech in here. And once we've done this, we can put a password in if we want to, but I'm going to leave that blank for this video, but you can put a password in on there. Now you can see here, it's given us Brightech and local account, and it's telling us basically we can sign out and finish our setup. You'll be logged out, and now you can log back in just like this into a local account. So if you're one of those people that have installed Windows and were forced to use a Microsoft account during the setup process, then this is how you can go back to a local account. Now, before we continue with the rest, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description, create yourself an account, and then use my promo code, capital B, capital R, 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD Key Sales. Once you submit your order, they will send you a key and you'll be able to activate your version of Windows just like you see on the screen right now. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. Next up, we're taking a look at Fast Startup. Let's move on to the next one. And the next one is inside Task Manager here, under Performance right here, you'll see Uptime. Now, this means that your computer, when you shut it down, doesn't actually shut down the computer. It stores information. And if you're having an issue and you shut down your computer and turn it back on, it's going to be still there. So clearing this uptime and making this reset back to zero every time you shut down the PC is exactly what you want to do. Then you need to turn off fast startup. Fast startup is known to cause loads of issues. And uh, people don't realize it's a feature that Microsoft added. So do a search for power and then look for power options in your search. Click on this one here and this will open up a window. Go to where it says choose what the power button does and you will see it's all grayed out. And if you want to turn this off, all you need to do here is click on change settings that are currently unavailable. And now you can see this is uh, unlocked it and you can now turn off the fast startup. It's saying it's recommended to leave this on but it can cause issues if you leave this on and it's advisable to turn it off in my personal opinion. So now when you shut down your PC, you will have a fresh start and it will be completely at zero. So next we're gonna do system restore. System restore is off by default now, but you can turn it back on and it can be quite useful if you're doing a driver update or you're doing some sort of changes to the registry having a quick system restore point can be useful for rolling back if something goes wrong but you can see it says off here so you need to go to configure once you type system restore in the search you can go into here configure and turn it on so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to turn this on it's just another safety net to have turn on system restore protection and about 5%, you can put that up there, and it will take up some space on your computer. But you see 3.16 gigabytes, which isn't too bad. You can give it as much space as you like, but we'll leave it at 5% for now. Click OK. And now what you need to do is create a restore point. 
You can call this whatever you like. Maybe you're doing a driver update, so you would call that before driver update or before tweaks or clean system or whatever it may be. If you've done a fresh install, you can do these system restore points and they can be quite useful to roll back to. It's not 100% foolproof, but it does actually give you a safety net and it can basically help you roll back. If you did a driver update and you got a blue screen, you can always roll back with your system restore point and that would be good enough to put the system back to a state that was working before you had the problem. So once that's done, you should have your system restore points created. Now, of course, you want to clean these out from time to time and create new ones because once they get really old, they really do not work very well. But when you go in here and click on system restore, you will see your system restore points that you created here. And you can see here, this one was set to manual. They do automatically create system restore points. You can make a, a task schedule to create system restore points for you at certain points if you want to automatically, but manually is good enough. And you can scan for affected programs if you want to restore the system back. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is going into the registry edit and type regedit in the search and open up the registry editor. This is another thing that I don't see a lot of people doing, which is creating a registry backup. You can click on the computer icon here, go to file, and then you can export a registry backup. It's a few hundred megabytes in size, depending on how much data and stuff you have on your PC. And this is a good safety net alongside other things like system restore, backups and other things like that. These can actually save your PC. So you want to do a backup here. So you can call this reg back. You can call this backup. You can call it wherever you like, but it's always best to have these because if you was doing some registry tweaks and messed up your registry, you can go back to a time when you created a good, clean, known working registry. And it's that simple. And it can be quite useful to restore back. So to restore to this, all you'd need to do here is go up to file and then import and choose that file. And it will put your registry back to that working state when you've made the backup. It's important that you keep on top of these because if they're too old, then it won't fix the computer and you will have issues. So there we go. There's our backups right here. And we've got a few of them. And you can see there are only a couple of hundred megabytes these size here. And again, they don't take up much space, but they can be quite important to roll back to. Uh, if you're doing some sort of registry uh, tweak, maybe you want to take a registry backup before you do any of those. It's important. So let's move on to the next one, which is inside Explorer. Go to the three dots and go to options. Inside here, you'll go to view tab and then make sure you show hidden files, folders and drives and remove the check mark from hide extensions the known file types. This is on by default and it's really important that you turn this off because if you don't, you won't know what the file extension is of that file. And some people will click on that file and this is how malware uh, can trick people when they click on it. It might look like a PDF file and it's not a PDF file, it's an executable file or a script. And next thing you know, it will cause an infection on your PC. So it's important, you can see here, we can see this is a bat file, which is a batch file, basically dot bat. And uh, this means batch file. If it had an executable, it'd be a dot exe or dot PDF. And you can tell what it is. These malware creators will change the file icon to make it look like one of those files. And you definitely don't want to be clicking on them randomly. Next, making a backup of your computer. I still see today in 2024, people don't back up their data. Or even make a system clone or a system backup. You can see here under new backups, you can either back up your system or you can back up your disk or partitions or you can back up files. Just by clicking on file here, you can choose what stuff you wanna back up. And all you need to do here is then choose the destination. It gives it a name with a date on it. And all you need to do is click on backup and it will back up all of your data. I've seen this so many times where they'll take their PC to a PC repair shop and they don't even have a backup of all their data. It could be all their photos and they don't have them in the cloud or anything like that or any sort of backups to an external drive. 
And you really want to keep data in three different locations. You want to keep them on the computer that you're using. You want to keep them on another device, whether it be off the computer, maybe on a NAS or maybe onto a external drive. And you want to keep one off site and you can keep that in the cloud or on another drive in someone else's property or in a fire safe or something like that. There's plenty of options available, but you can see here you can do system clones. You can do partition clones. You can create emergency disks and you can create loads of stuff like rebuild the MBR here, wipe the drive clean. It's super important to have regular backups of your data. That way, if something goes wrong or you're hit with ransomware or anything like that, you'll have backups of your data and you should be perfectly fine. And your data will be stored in another location. If you're storing it on the same drive as Windows, then obviously if, if Windows gets corrupted, you won't be having a backup of that data unless you've got it in other locations. And that's important that you have it in different locations that way if one drive fails you'll have a backup of it on another drive and that's why it's important to have uh, you know free backups of your data at least especially your mission critical or really important data that's the stuff you really want to back up at three different times in different locations next up we're going to be moving on to windows updates and you can see right here get me up to date but you'll see here restart the pc as soon as possible and this is even during uh, active hours when you're using the computer. So if you have a document open at that particular point and the PC will just shut down and restart. And if that's on, that is going to cause you to lose that data. So be very, very careful if you're having this option on and you don't turn it off. You need to turn this off to make sure that doesn't just restart when you have all your data uh, when you're working on your stuff, you could have uh, browser tabs open. You can have all sorts of stuff open. It will just shut down a PC. It does give you a 15 minute uh, warning before it reboots. But unfortunately, you could be asleep and uh, you could have stuff open still and people don't shut their PCs down. And next thing you know, it's going to cause an issue and you're going to lose that data. Next up, we're going to go to the group policy editor and we're going to open up this one right here by typing GP edit or GPO. And we're going to go here and we're going to control our Windows updates. Windows updates are set to automatically update. And it's not really a good thing to do because that way you could end up updating to the very latest update straight away and have issues with it. This way you can set it to manual where you can update when you really want to. If you're on Windows 10 Pro, or Windows 11 Pro or above, you can go into these settings and basically change them and configure automatic updates so i'm going to go into uh, manage end user experience here and we're going to make a change inside here you can see configure automatic updates is not configured so we need to double click on this and we can configure this to our liking now you can disable it but i'm going to enable this feature because i want to leave it uh, on because i want to change it to something that i want for instance down here it will tell me that i can notify for download and auto install that means it's going to notify me that there's an update available but it's not going to install it until i uh, click on it so you can set this up how you like uh, but really there's loads of options available in here for you to control your microsoft updates and take back control of those rather than having microsoft just forcing them and pushing them on you and installing them on your system in the background if that happens and there's a bug with it you can end up with major problems. This way, uh, you take full control of updates on your system. Now, there's quite a few ways of going about doing this. This is just one way of doing it. But basically, you can read all the information here and choose the option that suits you. But if you want to download and install them automatically, then you can choose a different option. But I want to be notified for downloads and be told that there's a download available and I want to then take control of it. So that's basically how you can do it on Windows 10 Pro and above and Windows 11 Pro and above. If you've got a Windows 10 Home or Windows 11 Home Edition, then you can use the services. And I'll show you quickly how to do that. This is just one way of doing it. You can also do it in the registry. I've made videos showing you how to do this, but go into services by typing services in the search and go down to where it says Windows Update. Double click on this one right here and you'll see it set to automatic and it's running in the background. Click stop to stop that service, set it to manual, 
and click OK and you're good to go. And now you've set that to manual. It's not going to basically run automatically and download and install all those updates, as you can see here. So that's it. That's the uh, Windows update set to manual. Let's move on to the next one. So I'm going to click on start here and go to settings. Another thing that people like doing is tweaking their computer. And you're going to have to go in here and turn off a lot of settings manually one by one. And there's tons of them in here, which are forced ads and also other stuff inside Windows itself. And if you want to turn a lot of this stuff off, you can go through and watch some of my other videos I've made giving you the ultimate optimization guide on how to turn a lot of this stuff off manually using the registry and also using uh, the group policy editor. I made one for Windows Pro versions and one for home versions. So if you want to do it manually, then watch that video. I'll try and leave a card in the video so you can follow that video. Or you can use batch files or scripts that you find online. Just make sure you know what you're doing. This does speed the process up. But the problem with these are is you don't know what changes they're going to make unless you understand what the code is doing in the background. So when you run this on the system, it's going to make all these changes for you. And there might be changes in here that you don't like. For instance, there might be changes in here to remove Edge, to remove and uninstall Windows Defender, and also remove key components of Windows, like the Windows Store and other things. And these can obviously break the system if you want to use those features and they're now removed and you might not be able to put them back as easy. So when you restart your PC, it may have made changes that you don't like and you may need to do a fresh install of that system because you can see this script here has completely debloated the Windows operating system. It's completely removed everything. And it's quite an aggressive script, so you've got to be super careful. But you can see it's made a load of changes to the system and it's using policies to stop these from working and turn them off. So these are the things that you have to remember before you start running scripts on your PC. I see so many people just coming on my Discord server asking for help to reverse what they've done because they've watched some video. And you need to know what you're doing and what you're getting into. Sometimes doing it manually is the best way. And I've made tons of videos showing you how to do that. So check some of those videos out on my YouTube channel. And remember, do all your backups and registry backups and system restore points before you do any changes so you can revert back if something goes wrong. Next up, we're going to be talking about the driver updates. There's quite a few ways of going about doing this, but on your system, you'll get updated with drivers by Microsoft. And sometimes these can go wrong and cause problems. I always go to the motherboard manufacturer's website and basically download all my drivers from there rather than having Windows doing it. If you want to stop Microsoft from putting drivers on your system, you can go into this location here where it says control panel, hardware and sound and device and print, printers inside here. Go to the actual computer itself and then turn off this feature here where it says installation settings. Do you want to automatically download manufacturers apps and custom icons that are available for your devices? There's also some uh, registry edits you can do, and there's also some group policy edits you can do. I've made videos on that, so you can check those out. But basically, that's just the basic one you can do there. And this will stop uh, drivers from being forced down through the Windows update section. And if you go into the group policy editor, there is a setting in there as well. And that comes under my ultimate optimization video. The same thing for registry edits for home users. You can use that video as well. And I'll show you how to do it in there as well. This is just the more easier, basic way for quickly showing you how to do it. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.